The analytics pane in Tableau is very useful because it helps you summarize or add analysis techniques to your views very quickly and easily with a couple of clicks. The analytics pane can be accessed by clicking the analytics tab here on the top left hand corner of your screen beside the data tab. And in this pane, you can see there's three sections, the summarize, model and custom section. And we'll go through the summarize section first, since it's at the top, and then work our way down to more complex objects in the model section, and then end with the custom section. To use any of these analytics objects, all you have to do is select one of them and then drag it into your view. In our view here, we have the sum of sales in 2020 for different category and subcategory splits in the Superstore data set. And depending on which object you select, Tableau will give you various options to do the calculations on. So as an example, if we select average line, it'll give us a prompt to add a reference line, either for the table, pane, or the cell. If we select the table, it creates an average reference line based on the entire table across all your data in your view. Or if we select a pane, then it's based on the individual panes and in our case here, the individual panes is the categories. So we have two reference lines here. And then if we select cell, it'll create the average line for each individual cell. And in our case, it's the subcategory. So there are a couple ways to edit or remove a reference line. One way to do so is to click on that reference line. And then you'll have the option to change the aggregation, edit it, format it, or remove it completely. I'm just going to undo and then show you another way. So another way is for the reference line that's on the specific axes. So currently they're on the sales in 2020 axes. You can right click on the axes and then have the options to add a reference line, edit or remove it. So if you have more than one chart in your view, you'll be given several options to apply a reference line. You can either apply to both charts by putting it into the header or individual ones by putting it into the individual column and row. Now let's take a look at the objects in the summary section. The first thing we have is a constant line, which allows us to specify a value. So let's just say 30,000. And now at 30,000, we have a constant reference line here. And then the next one is a average line, which averages the data depending on which one you select. So the table, pane, or cell, we'll select the pane. So now we have two reference lines, one for each category. And then if we wanted to find the value or we want to label the value, we just click edit and then we change it to value so we can see the average for each of the two lines. And then next is the median with quartiles, which shows the median line as well as the distribution band for the upper and lower quartiles. By default, they don't have labels, so what we can do is click on the boundaries of the quartiles and then edit it, and then add the label for the computation. And when we do that, you can see that it labels it the upper quartile and then the lower quartile with the median in the middle. Next, in the summarize section, we have box plots, which allows us to create box plots for our data to look at the distribution. Here in this view, I have the quantities of items that each customer purchased split out by year. So if we want to see the spread behind how many items customers are buying in a given year, we can input a box plot from the analytics pane here to see the quartiles as well as the max and min ranges. So anything in the shaded areas are the upper and lower quartiles. And then these whiskers are located here. And then everything beyond the whiskers are outliers. After the box plot objects, we have the totals object which lets us calculate the subtotals or grand totals for the data in our view. So for the data in our view, we have the sum of sales by subcategory. And if we want to see the subtotals for each category, we can drag totals into subcategories. And now we can see the total for furniture, office supplies and technology underneath the subcategory items. And then if we want to see the grand total, we just select total from our analytics pane and then drag it to grand totals. To remove any of these totals, all we have to do is click on the label and then we can change the aggregation or remove it. So we'll just remove it here. And then for the aggregation, I would recommend just using sum for totals because if we change it to minimum, for example, 
the number here changes, but the label actually stays the same. So this can be very misleading for your viewers if they're expecting a grand total, but then the number here is actually a minimum. So I'm gonna change this back to sum. Now we'll move on to the model section of the analytics pane. So the first object we have is the average with a 95% CI. You can simply drag it out to whichever aggregation you want it at. I'm going to keep it as a table aggregation. And then when we drag it out, we get the average plus the 95% confidence interval for that average. Similarly, if we want the median, we can drag the median out and then we see the median with the 95% confidence interval band. The next object we have in our model section is the trend line object, which allows us to show a trend line for our data. So in the view here, I have the running sum of sales over time so that if we fit a trend line to this data, we can predict the sales performance over time. So if we drag trend line out, we can see we're given different options for the trend line. So let's just start with linear. And when we drag it out, we can see that this linear trend line doesn't fit the data well, so we can remove it and try a different one, maybe a polynomial one. So this fits it a little better. And if we want to change the degree of the polynomial, all we have to do is click on the trend line and then click edit, and then we can change the degree here. So now this trend line fits the data a little bit better. And then if we want to see some statistics behind this trend line, we can click on describe trend model to see some statistics behind this trend line. So I won't go through this information here in this video, but let me know in the comments down below if you want me to go through it in a future video. The next object we have in our model section is the forecast object, which is used to find patterns or trends in the data so that an estimate can be made to continue into the future. Forecasts are normally used on data with dates so that you can estimate results for the near future. And in this worksheet, I have the month of order date and the sum of sales for those months. So if I want to forecast a few months past my data, I can use the forecast object, drag it into the view and get a forecast for those sum of sales past my months of order dates. If we want to see how Tableau created this forecast, we can right click on the forecast, go to forecast here and then go to forecast options. And we see the default settings for the forecast. So for the forecast length, it was automatically set to the next 13 months, but we can change it to exactly one year, one month, or one quarter, or until a certain year, month, or quarter. But here, I'm just gonna change it back to automatic. And then for the aggregation by, it's done in months currently, and this would be based off of how we're putting in our data in our view, and currently it's by month of order dates. So it's best to just keep it as months because that's how the view is currently made. And then for the forecast model, it's currently as at automatic, but we can change it to automatic without seasonality or customize it. So change the trend and season. But here I'm just going to keep it as automatic. So forecasts can be a whole video of its own, and I'll keep this section brief just for using it from the analytics pane. But let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do a deep dive on this topic. And similar to Trendline, if we want to see some statistics behind this forecast, we can go to forecast and then describe the forecast to see some of the statistics behind how this forecast was created, like the seasonal effects or the contribution from trend or seasonality. And then if we want to learn more, we can just click on this link provided by Tableau to learn more. And although we used a date dimension in this example, you can also do forecasts of data without dates, as long as you have the dimension field in the view with integer values. The last object that we have in our model section of our analytics pane is the cluster object, which allows us to create clusters in our data based on the measures we have in our view. And clustering is very useful when we want to segment our data into different groups to see the similarities or differences between the groups. As an example, if we're working with customer data and we want to segment our customers into different groups, we can do so so that we can determine their spending habits or items that one group may be buying more often than the other group. So here in our view, I have the sum of quantity and the sum of sales for different customers. And if we drag the cluster object into our view, we can see that the customers have been segmented right here. And we also have this pop-up where we can add more variables to the clustering model so that we can 
improve the clustering model based off of what variables we know will influence the clustering. And then Tableau also automatically created two clusters, but we can change the number of clusters used in the model so to maybe like four. And then we can see that now there are four clusters in our view. So maybe the discount field plays a role in changing how the clustering works for our different customers. So if we drag in discount to the variables, we can see how the clusters change. And similar to the trend line and forecast, we can get more information on the clusters, like their centers or the sum of square errors by right clicking the clusters field in the marks pane here, and then going to describe clusters. So if we wanna learn more information about the information described in the clusters here, we can click on the cluster summary statistics link provided by Tableau here. The last section in the analytics pane is the custom section. So all the objects we've talked about so far are quick ways for you to analyze your data. And the custom objects down here are the same as some of the objects that we've gone through. But when we drag the reference line custom object into our view, we can see that we get a pop-up and that's similar for the other custom objects that we drag into the view where this pop-up allows us to switch between the reference lines, the distribution bands or reference bands or box plots to get the analysis that we want. The scope here specifies how the data gets aggregated. So either with all the data in the table, the data per pane. So now we have two reference lines or per cell. I'm just gonna change this back to per pane as an example. And then the value for the reference line down here allows you to choose how you want to calculate that aggregation. So currently it's based on the sum of sales in 2021 with the average, but you can also choose parameter values down here, or you can add in other calculated fields into the detailed mark in your view here. And then that calculated field will appear as an option in this drop-down menu. So here is the aggregation. So how we want the value to be aggregated. And then next is the label. So we can choose how we want to display the label. Currently it's displaying the value. We can change it to computation or customize it and add in text plus the computation value. So maybe this is 2021 and now it's showing 2021 average or 2021 value. Let me get rid of the computation. And then the tooltip here allows you to change how your data is displayed when a user hovers above your reference line. So we can customize that and add in whatever value we want. And then down here is formatting. So we can change how the reference line appears in our view. Next is the reference band tab where we can specify how we want the band to appear. So from a specific minimum value to a specific maximum value or changing it from an average value to a maximum value. And then down here we have formatting as well. And then the scope also appears in the band tab as well. Next is the distribution tab where we can change how the distribution band is made. So with values for percentages, percentiles, quantiles or standard deviations. And then we have similar options for the label, tooltip, and formatting. So the last tab is the box plot, and there are only two options for how the whiskers can be extended to. So one of them is the data within 1.5 times the inner quartile range, and then the other one is the maximum extent of our data. So some custom objects may not fit your data, like how box plots don't really make sense in this view, so it doesn't really appear. And normally Tableau is pretty good at figuring it out, like how the box plot object can't be chosen from the custom analytics pane section, but you should also still make sure that the data in your view is appropriate for your analysis of choice. In this example, I'm going to go through using custom calculated fields as reference values, and also go through an example use case of the cell aggregation, because from first glance, it doesn't seem like there's much use to this type of aggregation. So here I have the sum of sales for 2021 for different subcategories, and this is a calculated field. So we can take a look at how it's made. And if the year of the order date equals to 2021, then the sales is included or else we end the calculated field. Similarly, we have a calculated field for 2020 
that we can use as a reference value for our reference line. We first have to drag the calculated field into the detail part of the mark. And now we can go to analytics pane and then drag in a reference line to the cell and then change this value to sales in 2020. So now these reference lines are based off of that calculated field. And then we can change the label maybe to custom and say 2020 and then add in the value. So now we see the value for 2020 and these aggregations don't affect this calculated field because this calculated field is currently aggregating at the cell and changing these won't make a difference. But if we do it for entire table or pane, because currently the pane is the entire table, we would see that these aggregations do work. So I'm just going to change this back to per cell. And now in this view, we can see that almost all the categories are doing better in 2021 than in 2020, except for the bookcases where it's doing better in 2020. To summarize what we went through in this video, the analytics pane allows us to summarize or add analysis techniques to our view very easily. There are three types of aggregation options, the table, pane, and cell. You can input a constant line, average line, median with quantiles, box plots, subtotals, and totals easily from the summarize section of the analytics pane. And the modeling section includes average and median with 95% confidence intervals, trend lines, forecasts, and clusters. For the trend line model, we can use a linear logarithmic exponential polynomial or power model. The forecasts can be made with a date or integer dimension field to estimate results for the near future. Next, we can specify the number of clusters and variables we want to use in addition to the ones in our view to fit our data with a clustering model. And the trend line forecasts and clustering models all have summary statistics, so we can determine the statistical significance of our models that we make. And then the custom section lets us customize different reference lines, reference bands, distribution bands, and box plots by using different aggregation values for our data. The cell option can be used to compare year over year data as an example that we went through. And last but not least, we can add calculated fields to the detail section of the marks pane to use them as our reference values. So this concludes the Tableau Analytics video. And if you enjoyed this video and want to be updated every time I post a new video, I would love for you to subscribe to me. I post a new video every Thursday.